Welcome to the Bio Balance Healthcast, episode number 415 Other Causes of Obesity in America. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Now, this is the third in a series of uh, podcasts that we have done on the issue of obesity. We did the first two in Europe. Uh, we were traveling in Europe looking to understand the difference between obesity in Europe and obesity in America and, and what the variety of difference is, the amount of difference, and the cause of those differences. So we did a couple of podcasts on what we learned in those circumstances. Then we continued our conversation when we got home to, to say what else do we understand or know about obesity in America. And the first segment that we want to, to cover today has to do with bad habits. And Dr. Moffat and I were talking. Uh, habituation is is uh, a thing that occurs naturally. You habituate yourself to repetitive events, activities, motions. Uh, some of our habits are learned consciously and deliberately. If, if you're a parent, for instance, uh, and you ever spent time teaching your child to tie their shoes, mm -hmm. that's incredibly frustrating for them. The physical mechanics of that are hard. Uh, understanding what they're supposed to do, why they need to do it to you know please you, or like you can never get off the couch again unless you tie your own shoe. <laughs> and they really think about it, and they concentrate on it, and they learn to tie their shoe. And then as they grow into little people, they learn to automate that behavior. Mm -hmm. And and now, if your child has grown, they can tie their shoes while they have a conversation and fix dinner and do homework all at the same time. So we think about yeah. that yes. when we're trying to train our children to do certain things. So when we're, we want if, them to if tie... We should think about We it. should be uh, thinking yeah. about that consciously. We're, have you taught Junior how to tie his shoes? Oh, right. no. Or well, it's your job. Yeah. Uh, you know, so so basically parents decide who's going to teach that. Mm -hmm. And it's it's something you're conscious of. But the habits of eating seem not to be conscious. Yeah. They seem to be something that we learn from our parents. And if we found later in life that they were not helpful to us, that they mm -hmm. were not a good thing, you would hope that we would not say the same thing to our children or try to develop that habit in, in our children that made us gain weight or made us sick because we didn't eat the right things. A lesson that I learned that was deliberately taught as mm -hmm. a child, I and mean, we're making the distinction between habits that you consciously, deliberately uh, inculcate in a child and habits that just evolve because of repetition exposure. But my parents taught me that as a sign of respect for my mother and her work in fixing the meals, because in our family, she did 90% of the cooking. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever my father cooked, it was a big special occasion. Everybody had to holler, Hosanna, Hosanna. This yeah. is great. Uh, for attention. Yes, exactly. But one of the rules was you have to clean your plate. Because mm -hmm. to not clean your plate is disrespectful. And the other thing was we were poor. And so to throw away food mm -hmm. was a sin. And that was the reason so we cleaned our plate. those two things together. It costs money to eat. So you better eat it all. Exactly. Uh, th think of the starving children in India. Mm -hmm. I heard that a million times. I never heard that. Well, I we, just heard where I grew up. Eat it all or else. Well, that, <laughs> that is, for variety's sake, mm -hmm. we mix the messages. But so I learned to clean my plate. Then, as I grew up and became a school teacher and had limited amount of time for lunch, you had like mm -hmm. a 20-minute break where you had to go from wherever your room was in the building to the cafeteria, mm -hmm. get your food. You could break in line, go and eat <laughs> your food and get back to your room. It had a limited amount of time, so you just wolf it all down. And, and that complements the clean your plate deal, mm -hmm. how fast you eat, right? how little you chew because mm -hmm. you just – and I'm – confabulating a number of messages here that we're mm -hmm. going to break back out. Uh, today, now that I consciously know how to choose my food and <laughs> choose my eating behaviors, mm -hmm. I will follow that when I am conscious, when I'm thinking about mm -hmm. it. But if I go on right. autopilot, either because I'm stressed out, or I'm tired. upset, I'm tired, mm -hmm. I'm not thinking, what, turn on the TV set, get a book. It's I dramatic. Will eat 
Yes. How you can just snap back oh into those old, you, yes. old habits that you had when you were a kid. Like in our house, everybody's upset. Mm -hmm. so something bad happened. Fine, let's eat. <laughs> get the ice cream out. The ice cream was the answer. Yes. So you get the ice cream out, and there's something it's about comfort food. There, there is something in ice cream that calms you down, and I mean, it's it's like giving yourself a drug. Well, and maybe and I'm it kind of settles you, and the calcium kind of makes your muscles relax, and so it does make sense. But there's just so many calories in ice cream, and it was never just one scoop of ice cream. It was an entire bowl of ice cream. Yeah. The worse you felt, the more ice cream well, you got out. Yes. And it was, it was, that was an unconscious thing that to this day I have to fight doing. Yeah. If I am ice really tired or really food. upset about I really something. crave it. And, and, and it helps settle me down when I'm upset. Mm -hmm. Just get, and even, Phil, my wife and I even have an argument. She says, if you have an upset stomach, don't drink milk or eat ice cream. Right. I don't know if she's right because for me, for you it, it makes your me stomach. feel better. It does well, make me feel worse. And for her, she has a different interpretation. Everybody's got a different metabolism yeah. too, though. So maybe that works for you, but not for her. Yeah, yeah maybe so, she has a lactose issue. I don't know. I just mm -hmm. know that for me, it it works. And she is always flustered about that. When I go to the say, you know, when I'm sick, and she's like, "Honey, can I get you anything?" I'm like, "Ice cream." She is like, ooh, that's disgusting, and that's. But it settles your stomach. It does. So that's more of a chemical thing, not an emotional thing. Okay, well, maybe but it's both. It may be yeah. both. Yeah. But but I've heard from people who have lots of kids in the family, that because they have lots of kids in the family, and because they ate family style, meaning, you put big bowls of yes. things on the table. Yes. That they had to eat fast, mm -hmm. so they would put as much on their plate as possible. And then they had to eat fast so that they could have seconds because they had to, they felt better when they ate more than their siblings. Somebody once asked Sonny Liston, heavyweight champion of the world, how did you get to be so tough? And true story, he was one of 25 children. That's he said, impossible. No, it's how not. How many mothers? I don't know. In, in his household, <laughs> there were 25 kids. Oh, my goodness. And so he said, I had to be pretty tough to get to the table. Right. Because there wasn't enough food to go around. It's and true. And you claim your share. But, and we're still holding on to these habits of the pe peasants that came from other countries because they wanted a better life. Those were my grandparents. And in that world from Lithuania, from Russia, they thought children were to work for the family. Mm -hmm. They were like dogs. They were to be fed last. They were not valuable. And that all the, all the parents ate and they ate everything and they were huge and these children were starving and then the children would get what was left. So that made my mother covet food and always like hide to eat her food. She would take food into her room and shut the door yeah. because in her world, that's Some adult how would come by or they would take it. it. Yeah, they absolutely. would take it. So, so then that habit ends up coming down to us because when I want to have something that I shouldn't have, I will hide sneak it off. and sneak off and eat because and eat my mother taught me that by example. I mean, well, that's something we look at and we go, she's doing it. That's ridiculous. I don't know why she's doing it, but I, but we, in, we import that into our, into our, my, my wife and my habits. doctor both tell me I'm not supposed to eat donuts. I yes. have been known to sneak off and have a donut because I like them. I know. And I know. So, so but we, you know, yeah, we, I mean, we aren't going to look at you when you're eating a donut and say, oh, my gosh, that's terrible. Spit that out. Yeah, you're gonna Although I do stare at you a lot when you're eating one. <laughs> so we, we can tell anecdotes all day. The message that we want you to hear is that the lesson, the habituation of eat when you're upset, eat when you're stressed, eat all the food that's available at the moment. And, and that what Kathy mentioned just a minute ago about serving from big serving bowls. Uh, most of the people that I know have like 12 inch to 14 inch mm -hmm. dinner plates. And so you set that at a meal, you're gonna put more food on a 12 inch plate because it doesn't look like there's enough food on a big plate. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to moderate your consumption, which is one of the things that we recommend, especially as you get older, you need to regulate your portion control. So if you're trying to moderate that, one of the easier ways to do it, and, and truly, psychologically, get a smaller plate. Get what we call a salad plate and have that be your regular dinner plate and put right. food on it. And if you mm -hmm. need to go back for more, uh, for instance, do that. 
serve it from the stove, from pots and pans. Go put a the serve it choices onto your plate. on the plate for someone and, and give them that plate and have them sit down at the table. Have them put their fork down between bites. Mm -hmm. You take a bite. And, and I know Eat slower. The raising food's a child, the food's going nowhere. we taught our child, you have to chew so many times because mm -hmm. they'll just swallow. They're like animals. They'll just <laughs> inhale it and swallow it. <laughs> then they get sick and they choke. And so I'd say you have to, you know, and we sit and count with, with the little boy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, you got to chew 50 times or chew 30 mm -hmm. times or whatever it was. So, and that's not bad. we all worked on that. But one of the things that we didn't consciously work on until I learned more about it later in life, put the darn fork down. Because mm -hmm. boys in particular, I'm, and I never raised a girl, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. But boys will hang their head over the plate and bring the food to their head. They mm -hmm. they don't sit back and bring a mouthful of food to their mouth. Well, so they just rotate and they mm -hmm. they cock and load. Mm -hmm. They put a mm -hmm. mouthful in. They get another scoop and, and their they mouth's hold still it full. here they haven't ready swallowed while it they. Yet. Swallow some, their mouths are never completely empty. Mm -hmm. A little bit will drizzle down the throat. They'll open up some room. They shove some more in it and cock and load another one. Mm -hmm. And that's the food's not going anywhere. <laughs> well, unless and, you live in Sunny Listen. Well, house, yeah, right, or but your I mean, house. but in general, the food's not going anywhere yeah. in America. The food's there. Right. It's either going to get eaten or put away as leftovers. So, the fact is, is it takes twenty minutes for a person to start eating and feel full. Yes. So you need to sit down at a table. Have eating is not about eating. It's about talking to people, talking to your family, about communication. It's not just about filling your face. It, it would be so much better if people would not eat in front of the television. Set. I know. Families it really do. would be. I know. Uh, if you have children home in particular, turn the television off. Sit at the table, and also make them put their phones away. No cell yeah. phones at the table, mm -mm. and and that means for the grownups too. I mean, That's everybody true. needs to do that. Uh, serve from the, if, if weight issues are a concern in your family because some of you are heavy, not just as a general goal, mm -hmm. then use smaller plates, serve from the stove, not from bowls on the table. And so many of us grew up in households where there'd be just a little bit of mashed potatoes left. And mom would say, somebody needs to eat this mm -hmm. because it's not enough to save mm -hmm. and we can't throw food away. Right. So then you eat more than you would have eaten or than you should have eaten to satisfy that command. And I have noticed that moms that have toddlers, yeah. toddlers don't eat what you put on the plate in front of them. They either play with it or they, but they just won't, or they mess with, they tur stir it around, but they're not going to eat it all. So the mothers then take the plate and they sit by the garbage disposal and they eat it before they rinse the plate off. And I've watched that so many times. Because you can't throw it away. Because they yeah, just we, can't throw it away. This. But it's mm -hmm. food that somebody has either spit on, put their fingers in. It's gross. I mean, how can you eat that food? You have to think, my child just played with that food for 20 minutes. I'm not eating this. This is not going to kill me to throw this food away. It was it was meant for him or her. But that's, that's something you have to actually, in your mind, think about. Teach your children good things habits yes and break the habits and model those habits for and, them yeah, you can't just tell them you have to you have to do the way. same thing you yes. can't just shove everything in your mouth and run off to do or whatever while you're on the phone or or god forbid <sighs> eat in the car i mean that you know when you yes. but this yeah. first starts with over scheduling i was just gonna if say, you over schedule well, your what children you're talking you're about eating is not in the car forever and always we're talking about it as a general rule as a pattern because we began our conversation with a conversation about habituation. So yes, all of us have eaten in the car, eat in front of the television set. There's a big game on, or some political. The president's talking tonight. Or Joe and I are to driving say. to Kansas City. Yeah, and so you eat while you go. But mm -hmm. as a general rule, as a family practice, have mealtime be special times. And, and I used to actually work with people, men who were uh, widowed or divorced in, mm -hmm. in later ages in their life, and and I would really encourage them because of boredom, stress, grief, loss, what have you, teach yourself to eat at the table. Mm -hmm. Don't eat in bed. Don't eat on the couch. Set a place setting. Set a place setting, fix your meal, sit down, and eat. Or invite somebody over to talk to. Well, yes. Yeah, because, all, all of those. Because those are things that they keep you living longer and healthier if you have someone to talk to while you're eating. But if you eat in bed, you don't think you ate. Yeah. You just think, oh, I was in, I was sitting in bed watching TV. You don't think about what you just downed, and so you're you're more likely to go eat something else, so that you will overeat and have too many calories. So we have lots of, we do lots of weight 
um, training, how to lose weight, how to keep the weight off. We have alt we have um, machines that actually dissolve fat and help people lose fat where they want to. So a Juva shape. So we tell people, you have to do a consult with our with our nurse practitioners or with us. Learn how to eat and what to eat and how much. Write it all down. Then you have to think about it first. And bringing it into consciousness and, and making change, it stay there. And change, and change your, your habits. habits yes. So that you are eating. It's it's not a diet. It's a life change. It's a well, change and we're of the talk habits. More about that next week because there are several other points that we wanted to make in addition to bad mm -hmm. habits. So we'll we'll close today with a summary about bad habits. Habits can happen automatically without thought. They can ha happen just because we're alive and we habituate to things in our environment. But they also happen because we train them, we teach them, we require we them. We learn them. We learn them. So relearn your eating habits, relearn your food behaviors if you need to as a way to fight obesity in your life or in the life of your family. You'll be healthier and happier. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.